Okay, so we are going to be aligning um, some meshes along a curve uh, procedurally. This is for uh, whose mesh was it? I've forgotten her name if you message me now. Uh, for Emma, who's making a snake. Um, so what she wants to do is basically model the scales and arrange the scales around um, around the, the snake mesh she already has. Um, well, we can do something kind of like that, where we're going to basically rebuild the snake's body out of the scales, if that makes sense. Um, so what we first need to do is model two uh, scales. And this is as simple as it gets. Uh, they look like this, making sure that they don't clip through each other. So each scale um, on one side comes up, the other one goes down. Uh, and then at the back, we come down. We can do some some more adjustments to this once we've made a circle of them. So like a ring of scales to go all the way around the body. If I hit three, you can see the shape they're going to be uh, when subdivided. So that's 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 the final shape. Obviously, they're going to have some thickness to them, but we're going to do uh, do this with the uh, just the planes to begin with. So basically what we want to do is we want to make a line of them and then use a bend deformer to uh, set a, uh, make them into a ring. I'm just going to do this by eye because I actually think um, a little bit of irregularity can help something like this look more realistic. So the way I've modeled it, you see that if I move these two scales across, they don't clip through the next one. I'm just going to align them by eye and then shift D, 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 D. Uh, so right now we have two, four, six, eight, ten, basically 14 scales. I feel like that's probably enough for one ring, maybe one more. So we have 16 scales going around the whole snake. I'm going to combine those. Pivot point should already be in the middle. I'm just going to bring it back to the center. Then I'm going to use a deformer to bend it. So the deform menu, nonlinear bend. We get this bend handle. Um, right now it's facing the wrong way, so we just literally rotate the handle and tweak the curvature. Uh, adding to the curvature, you see it's the wrong way. Our scales are backwards, so we just do minus one, and it should scale them into a perfect circle. You'll notice that it's going by the bounding box. So we have, instead of an overlap here, we just have the edges meeting. So we just need to go like minus 184. That's too high two one literally just one degree more and it overlaps them just the right amount so i'm happy with that if we press three we can see what it looks like i'm going to hit uh delete history freeze transformations it's going to remove the bend handle so we just have this ring of scales and then i'm going to make some adjustments so what we want to do here is make sure that the inside edge goes in I'll turn on soft select for this. And then we're going to take the outside edge, or sorry, the middle edge here, scale this one out, and the tips of the scales outwards as well. So what we basically have is scales that come out, they go back down, and then they curve up at the tip. I'm going to bring these in a little bit too much. And I want quite a nice gradient between the start and the end so that the scales always overlap nicely. So we're going to extrude these now and add some thickness to them. 0 0.4 seems good. I'm going to go around and quickly add a supporting edge loop to the all the edges of the scales just to define that edge a little bit more probably should have done this before we bent them but oh well it's just 16 clicks not the end of the world and then um, we want the scales to I'm just gonna center the pivot here we want the scales to not be aligned like like this right they the way that animal scales work is that they're always offset like bricks going up a wall 
So if we make a pair of rings, like so, you just pick the distance. Uh, now, however many times we duplicate this, it's always a perfect, um, perfect tiling, tiling pattern, right? But we don't need to duplicate them because we're going to let our mesh network do that. So this is our base mesh. I'm going to turn off Smooth Mesh Preview just so it's a little bit faster to interact with. Delete history, freeze transformations, make sure our pivot is right in the middle and our thing is on the grid. Seems like I did accidentally duplicate this. There we go. And now we're going to make a mesh network. So what are mesh networks? Well, it's basically Maya's proceduralism tools. If you've ever used Blender, you might have used their scattering and random placement tools. All that stuff is in the mash menu in Maya. So there's a whole mash uh, workspace, but that's more for animate animating with mash. Um, there is a mash shelf as well, and we're just going to be using the create mash network button. So I'm only just going to run to the mash, mash shelf, hit create mash network, and then return to... Oh, so what we want to do is make sure that our mesh is aligned on the Z, sorry, on the X axis. Um, mesh networks just seem to work better on X on the red. So in, if you use it on Z, you're going to run into some issues. So we're going to do it on um, making sure that positively when we add, add um, extra meshes in the mesh network on Z, they go in the direction we want them to. Um, it's better to do that first before we start using the mesh network. So just make basically make sure the mesh is pointing on the red axis and then go back to mesh, create mesh network. There you can see it's in the same place. Nothing seems to be somewhere it shouldn't be. And adding uh, distance to X is spacing out our things. So that's perfect. Obviously, I think you can kind of see what the functionality of this is. We can add more divisions or more copies, and we can space out those copies uh, more dynamically. So what's good about this is we could align these along the curve in other ways, but we would have to guess how many we needed to do that. And it would take a lot of trial and error. With the mash network, we can dynamically add copies in as we need them. So I'm going to... Uh, set my settings down to something low just to begin with. So distance of 40, number of points 10. Um, you'll notice we have the mash network down here in the outline and we can select it, but we also have the mash mesh, the mash mesh, the the repro mesh or reproduced, I believe it's reproduced mesh. That is basically the mesh output of our mash network. That means we can do operations on this as if it was a normal polygon mesh, even though it's got some dynamic properties uh, related to it. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention as well is that before you um, make your mesh network, you need to move your mesh base net mesh to the center of the world. Otherwise, the center of your mesh network is going to be away from your mesh, which uh, will cause obviously a weird offset when you try and uh, use curve warp. So. I've just moved this to the center of the world. Delete history, freeze transformations. I'm just going to clean up some stuff in the outliner real quick. And I'm going to go to my mash shelf, create mash network. Uh, you can see things are working well. 10 and 40 seems this is the right kind of spacing we want on the scales. If I hit three, you can see how our scales look subdivided. Um, so I'm going to select my mash mesh and my curve and I go back to the poly modeling shelf just so I have access to delete history and freeze transformations deform curve warp and we should have the mesh placed exactly where we want it now here's the cool thing right we can go into our mesh network so select the mesh uh, repro mesh from the outliner and go to uh, 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 what is it? Mash distribute tab. And we can add more copies. 
128. Be careful what you type in here. I've accidentally typed like a thousand with that by accidentally not deleting the previous input and crash my and then we can space these out. So let's try 300. Better. 400. It's going to be more like 600. We can just keep tweaking this value until it gets to the end. 1000 seems about right. Let's check. Oops. My nine key is a bit messed up. Nine hundred, please. Two hundred and fifty six divisions. Checking how it looks in subdivision mode. Pretty good, but we do have some irregularity in the scales. It may be that we need to rebuild our curve with a few more uh, curve points to get a better result. Now, I don't think we can do that live. So I'm just going to undo So before we did our mesh network. Can be a bit laggy if you're working with a lot of polygons. So if I go to my CVs here, it seems like we have quite a lot of points, but 72 spans. Curves, rebuild. Maybe we need less spans. Let's try 32. We definitely have a smoother curve. Once again, deform, curve warp. Back to our repro mesh. Find our mesh distribute. Distance. It's around about a thousand and number of points 256 seem to work pretty well there we go so rebuilding the curve smoothed out the uh the curvature of the curve and we get an even distribution of the scales which looks really really good i'm going to leave it on 1000 and uh 256 divisions so obviously we're, we're really getting up in the polys there but this is going to be the high poly mesh anyway What's cool about this is that on Curve Warp, if we find our Curve Warp tab, uh, we can scale the curve. So we can make the end of the curve narrower, much like you might see on a snake tail. We can even make it start narrower, get thicker, and then get narrower again, just like a snake's body. So this is the way I would do it. I would rebuild your um, rebuild your curve to build the snake. Either take one of the edges of the snake that already exists, convert it to a curve, and then build up the mesh like this. Let's turn on smooth mesh. It's going to lag, but it's worth it to see what it looks like. And there's our result. So obviously um, it would be ideal when we make the mesh network to start with this um, this scale ring, but also have a, a cylinder inside so that we can never see in between the scales. So if we just had a cylinder underneath, a bunch of cylinders that um, would also get mashed around, that would work out really well. <laughs> 